Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and happy Pride. I have to say, my heart's very full tonight to hear all of you singing and to sing along. Um, it feels, uh, feels like our sanctuary's full, so that's, that's very, very special. And um, I'm just going to say this quick word. Zoe asked me to mention to all of you that if you, anybody wants to write a kvittle, which is the notes that go in the hotel in the Western Wall. If you want to do that tonight before you leave and give them to Zoe, she'll be happy to take them and put them in the hotel for your prayer to rise up at our holiest site. So see Zoe after services. Pride, what does it mean today? You know, it is Pride Month again, as you know, and we've come a very long way since any gathering of LGBTQ people were harassed by the vice squads. Today, law enforcement and first responders march proudly alongside the myriads of nonprofit organizations and corporations in pride parades all over the country. Many companies rush to change their logos now for the month of June into a rainbow assortment, while some create specialty pride merchandise. I, I want to say I'm not opposed to this, but we actually do the same with our own logo at Cole and Me. Our logo is, for, is a rainbow for this pride month and in trans flag colors at other times of the year, especially during Trans Awareness Week. But for me, it is a bit of a wonder, even a miracle, if you will, that our queer communities have seen the acceptance that we have through these many decades. So we do have a lot to be proud about. We have legal achievements and legislative achievements and acceptance in many corners of the world that were previously and where we were previously shunned. According to the Pew study in 2021, nearly 70% of Americans accept same-sex marriage. 67% to be accurate. I want to say that's two-thirds of America. It's an astounding figure for someone like me who was so involved in the battle for marriage equality when time after time and I would stand in front of rooms where people ridiculed me as a rabbi. How can you stand for marriage equality? And I would try to teach them, teach them about who we really were. 70% of America. There are 31 countries around the world that have legalized same-sex marriage. Granted, there's still a lot more countries to go, but this number alone is astounding. And some, like Israel, while they won't allow a wedding to be formed there in Israel, and in fact, they won't let a reform rabbi do a straight wedding in Israel either, <laughs> but they will recognize a gay marriage, a lesbian marriage done outside of Israel as a marriage with full legal rights. And this year, there is serious, serious action towards marriage equality in eight more nations, including India, Japan, the Philippines, Thailand, Bermuda, Cuba of all places that used to quarantine queer people, the Czech Republic, and that little tiny country of Andorra. The old commercial said it best, baby, we've come a long way. The history of our movement, however, is hardly just a forward line. There are fits and starts, time advances, and then there are times where there are setbacks. It isn't linear. That is the nature of all progress. Pride Month of June is commemoration of an uprising in New York City after the Stonewall Inn was raided in late June of 1969. Some had gathered there following the funeral of Judy Garland on June 27th, hence over the rainbow. But early in the morning of June 28th, the bar was raided. All gay bars in New York City at the time were owned by the mafia, the Genovese family. The patrons had had enough, though. And their spaces, it was their spaces, gay spaces, queer spaces, and they fought back fiercely. Crowds gathered outside the bar in the early morning hours, and over the next three days, 
tired of harassment, tired of the bullying, tired of being targeted by police, the LGBTQ community led by trans women, Sylvia Riviera, Masha P. Johnson, Tammy Novak, and lesbian Stormé de la Verri, who some say delivered the very first blow at the police, said we aren't going to take it anymore. It was a riot. It really, well, it wasn't a riot. It was a proclamation of our human dignity. It was an announcement that appeasement was no longer the pathway forward. It was a moment that became an organizing inflection point for the LGBTQ community. And after those three days, many organizations were created. Masha and Sylvia created STAR, an organization that helped homeless transgender kids on the streets of New York City get the resources that they need. And of course, the Gay Liberation Front was created, and our own pride parade here in Los Angeles, Christopher Street West, was founded to mark that one-year anniversary of the Stonewall Uprisings. Los Angeles had the very first Pride Parade, the first parade march, which took place just a few blocks here, from here from our synagogue, down Hollywood Boulevard. It was started by my good friend, the founder of the Metropolitan Community Churches, the Reverend Troy Perry, along with Bob Humphreys and activist Morris Kite. They were early activists here in Los Angeles. Morris was a feisty guy, I can tell you that. Some wanted a protest march. Some wanted another uprising. But Reverend Tory Perry famously said, no, we're going to do a parade. After all, this is Hollywood. <laughs> but LAPD was no better than NYPD. Gay people were constantly harassed here. Trans people were harassed. Gay bars were often in a small, unincorporated strip of the county next to Hollywood and next to Beverly Hills that was out of LAPD reach. You know it now as the city of West Hollywood, but then it wasn't a city. When Troy and Bob and Morris went to get the permits for their parade, think Rose Parade, right? They're used to the Rose Parade. They went to get permits to make this a legal parade. You had to go to the police to do that. The police didn't want to give them a permit. So it went to the police commission and according to Reverend Perry, the police commission voted four to one to place a lot of conditions on the parade permit. They were one, you have to put up a bond for a million dollars to pay out the businesses when people throw rocks. Two, you have to put up a cash bond in addition of $500,000 and you've got to get at least 5,000 people marching. Now, the ACLU joined Christopher Street West in their legal challenge of the police and the police commission, of their excessive fees and their restrictions that other parades were not required to you have. And so the California Superior Court ruled in favor of Christopher Street West and ordered the police commission to issue a parade permit to CSW for only a $1,500 security payment and furthermore, all other requirements were dropped. And so on June 28, 1970, one year exactly after the riots began at Stonewall Inn, people gathered right here on McCadden Place in Los Angeles, marched north to Hollywood Boulevard, and proceeded towards Vine Street. CSW's Gay Pride Parade became the first permitted gay pride parade in the world. Now, there were marches in Chicago and San Francisco and New York that weekend commemorating the Stonewall riots, but San Francisco had 30 people organized by the Gay Liberation Front. Chicago had a little more at 150, but LA is home to the original Pride Parade, permitted and part of the offerings of our city. Over the years, Pride marches and parades and festivals have evolved and there were gatherings in Washington, D.C. in the years, national marches on Washington in 79, the year after the assassination of Harvey Milk to commemorate that. That march had 
five goals. And it was ba aimed to ban discrimination based on sexual orientation, urging President Jimmy Carter to sign a bill to stop all discrimination against gays and lesbians in the military, federal jobs, and demanding Congress include sexual orientation in the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Marches insisted on the repeal of anti-gay legislation and the addition of family protection laws that would allow gay and lesbian parents to receive fair custody trials. Then again in 1987, and then in 1993, which I will tell you, for those of you that like history, we had a large Colomy contingent at, and we marched with the Colomy banner in, and again in 2000 and 2009, much of our agenda for those gatherings of those national marches remains undone till this very moment. We still do not have comprehensive national legislation that would provide consistent and explicit non-discrimination protection for LGBTQ people in employment, housing, education, juries, public spaces, or public services. The Equality Act, which was introduced in the Senate um, by Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon just last year, passed the House but it was stalled in the Senate, and it will likely die there in this 117th Congress, and it will have to be reintroduced again by both the House and the Senate post midterms. Yes, we have marriage equality, which is the law of the land for now, but pay attention to what happens when the Supreme Court rules any day now on Roe v. Wade, because when Roe goes, they're coming for us next. Obergefell v. Hodges is not far behind. And much of the battle for equality, or should I say the battle to discriminate, has shifted to the state legislatures. From Texas to Tennessee, Alabama to Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri to Florida, even Arizona, our neighbor, the sheer number of anti-LGBTQ bills that have been signed into law is frankly a bit overwhelming. And with particular venom towards anti-transgender laws criminalizing and seeking medical ban uh, seeking uh, seeking bans for medical care for trans children calling it child abuse if you seek gender affirming care for your kid banning transgender youth in sports and even their dance teams permitting businesses to discriminate against gay and lesbian people like in Colorado where the cake maker refused to make a wedding cake for that gay couple we here in Los Angeles, West Hollywood, and in California live in one of the best states to protect our lives and our equality. But make no mistake, if the midterms elections have a change in the majority toward a rightward political shift, with the current Supreme Court filled with far-right conservative majority, we cannot sit on our laurels. We cannot let this pride parade go by this Sunday without remembering that you're going to be called upon again in the next months and weeks and years to engage, to fight for Roe v. Wade, which if the Alito leak is accurate, will not only decimate the right of women to control the, her own body, but the right for every gay, lesbian, bi, genderqueer, non-binary, transgender, agender person to control our own bodies. We are one court case away. We will need everyone in the fight. We will need every queer ally, everyone in America who cares about personal liberty, everyone who cares about equality for LGBTQ people, everyone who wants to fight the dehumanization of queer people. And I want to tell you, it will be hard. But there has never been more of a reason for this congregation, for this community, and it will take all of us, all of us, to build a world of love and pride that we need, that our world needs. In closing, I want to share with you a final queer story for tonight's Pride. The Stonewall riots and uprising made clear 
that the LGBTQ movement needed to be loud and visible and to demand change. Five months after the riots, activists proposed that there should be a resolution at the Eastern Regional Conference of Homophile Organizations in Philadelphia, of all places, that there should be a march to be held in New York to commemorate the one-year anniversary of the raid. Their proposal was for an annual march to, on the last Saturday in June with no dress or age requirements. This, of course, was shared with L.A. and San Francisco and Chicago, and, of course, we know the results of that. But when organizers were looking for a slogan for the event, a member of that planning committee, whose name is L. Craig Schoonmaker, suggested pride. The idea of gay power, which was much more common, right? Women's power, women's liberation movement, right? Black power, Black Panther movement. Think about the late 60s and the era that it was. Gay power was thrown around as well. But Schoonmaker argued that while gay individuals lacked power, one thing they did have was pride. And that is why the official chant for the march became, Say it loud, gay is proud. <laughs> so there you have it. Now you know why it's called Pride Month. Now you know why the emphasis is on gay pride. But my friends, we do have pride in who we've become and what all we have worked for. Gay and straight, lesbian and non-binary, queer and transgender, all of us together, we have worked hard for all we have achieved. No one has just given it to us on a platter. Not special rights, but human rights. But my friends, something is different this time than in 1969. We also have power now in ways we never had it before. Pride coupled with power. And we have to use both. Both over the next months and years together to sustain our community. This community of Kolomi, the community of queer people and straight people joined together in love to transform the world as it should be. May our hands and our feet and our words rise up in pride and in power. Shabbat Shalom, Pride Sameach. Happy Pride, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, what, what is this, Broadway? I don't know. <laughs> we don't usually clap in temple. Okay, <laughs> snaps. Uh, it's really, it's my pleasure to invite my good, good friend and long and longtime temple member and board member, board of trustee member, Mark Perchin, to say some more board duties of welcoming each of you on this festive holiday.